Hey, what's going on, everybody? So, um, hopefully my camera's or my mic's not screwed up, but if it is, sorry, it's underwater. But uh, we're gonna come right into Mongoose uh, Amplifier 2, and um, you know, uh, the music's gonna cut in and out, um, but you know, I'll work in kind of my input about the bike so you're not just having to hear me breathe hard and stuff like that. All right. Hey guys, so as you can see, yeah, I've been riding a few minutes with music some people won't like, but that's okay. Like, just hit it on mute if you don't like it, or just uh, don't hit that uh, like button. Just hit the uh, dislike button and then, uh, you know, watch something else. But anyway, yeah, riding this old Bongoose Amplifier 2 is not killing me. If any of you I've watched me on Instagram. Yeah, my suppose I've been posting with this bike. Oh, especially today. Here comes the check section. Am I in the right gear? I should be. Yeah. No foot dams. Yeah. <laughs> but that's actually the hardest section at tape farm. Uh, for technical. Oh no. Technical. So, but yeah, out of all my bikes, I old bikes that I ride, I like this one, you know. But uh, I think the my second favorite old school full suspension to ride would be the LTS. I like this bike, you know, Mongoose had made this uh, more of a cross country, or I should say amp research, and Horse Lightner made this more of a cross country specific bike. Although, Brian Lopes, when he was racing for Mongoose, to a downhill, they had made a downhill version of this bike with the coil spring and this huge nitrogen reservoir, which always look weird to me. I hate to say it, but uh, 
it's look like a small phallic or look like a penis i didn't like it you know look weird and you know the lts at its time obviously winning tons of downhill races for its time you know for years um you know that's that's a great bike um i love it for uh, descending um you know for an old school bike it's really good for uphill it's a uh, oh it's hard but this bike is pretty well balanced which is fun <laughs> Uh, which probably makes uh, sense why the four bar platform is such a well loved platform. You know, Specialized bought the patent for the four bar. They bought an Ampersurge Surge for the horse, the link that we know of. And, uh, you know, fun factoid you know gt was with their lts was doing so good in sales and winning that especially the sales department makes sense when you have a winning bike but you know uh especially i said enforce their patent and so gt had to come up with a different design hence the iDrive. so well you know and that's a that's an okay bike. Um, let me just get up this hill. But the climbing here, it's not bad. We're on a 32, 42 combo right now. Oh, man. I'm glad I got the the old re-brake sometimes or a bit you know uh, they were good but when the weather uh, gets a little iffy you know then I don't have much braking Whew. but yeah this is a, a neat bike a Frank the Welder bike I don't know how long the bushings or the frame's gonna last but that's you know I ride the wheels off because that's how these how many of these bikes are meant for you know to be ridden with miraculous abandon so that's just me But um, yeah, you know, riding old school bikes is really challenging in of itself. But I will say the this bike climbs pretty well for a full suspension. Uh, not better than any of my other bikes, but the iDrive. The iDrive has traction for days but this design is pretty uh, predictable to four bar here um, and as I'm sure many of you know with the GT high drives they are uh, they do take an experienced hand to work on the, I think during the last couple iterations, they were really a lot more mechanic friendly. You know, you didn't have to, they finally used bearings versus bushings and uh, definitely a downfall of the classic LTS. But, you know, this bike gives bushings too. But, uh, so we'll see how long these last. 
on and I'll know when they're warned when there's flex in them There we go. Up and over with skinny. Whew, yeah. Yeah, this isn't as plush as the iDriver. Any of my bikes. Uh, well, still bikes. I think the most plush would be the uh, unified rear triangle platforms. Um, just not great climbers. Then the single pivot, Univega, and then the iDrive. And at least the LTS. The RTS, that's a, you know, um, it's a neat bike, but man, uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely the, my least favorite, hate to say, to ride out of the old school bikes. Beautiful bike, just, like, you know, the 55 millimeters of travel and back, you, you run through all of it. This one's at three inches of travel in the back and then four up front here, because this is a quote unquote newer fork for RockShox super budget XC28. Although, you know, if I wasn't trying to upgrade my more contemporary bikes. Probably throw a Manitou air spring fork in here. Um, looks okay. I think when it's time to put these bikes out to pasture, if anybody wants to adopt them and you know they're willing to put in the time you know, I'll definitely offer it to somebody for, you know, at least the cost of shipping and gas just to drive it, but, you know, to UPS store or whatever. But, um, you know, this bike's held up really well. It, you know, it runs hardware store parts, believe it or not. Uh, you know, uh, even most of the parts I can find at Napa or, and or, you know, a hardware company Especially if you guys are looking for places to shop for, you know, the screws. And you live in, I don't know, Western Washington. You could totally give uh, Tacoma Screw a shout out uh, or a try. You know, they, or even uh, my my good resource in Redmond, Oregon, Risky Racing, and ship them the part and just say, hey, could you remake something like this? or call him first and you know a lot of times he'll he'll uh, help you out that way he's cool like that that's i mean he rebuilt the shock and fun fact if you uh go at the pros closet and you look at mr Gale's original down from yeti um you can actually rissy kevin rissy's company rebuilt that shock for uh, the pros closet on Missy Geov's uh, or Geov's um, Cannondale or Yeti, Yeti, sorry, Yeti downhill bike, and he's done it for this bike too. So uh, he's, uh, you know, he's a really good. I'm glad that um, he's around. Uh, I know a lot of people may not. His customer service can be hit and miss, but. 
you know, if uh, if you got some other wheels to ride, you know, you can always just maybe play the patience game with uh, Kevin Rissy and I'm sure he'll help you out. I've had to do that many times, you know. But I'm just at the point in my career or life uh, like to try have a you know just be able to ride a few bikes other bikes that spark my curiosity give them a good shake and you know I just don't have I just don't have a Jay Leno size garage for my bikes but keeping these alive is keeping these old bikes alive is hard to do as they say you know if, uh, if you're on some kind of budget so whoop. look at that <laughs> The bike gets right. What a bike. Hopefully. Focus. Oh, oh, this wood is can be so slick. <laughs> Real slick. So we made it. Yeah. Yeah, this. Uh, I think another bike I looked at in terms of retro they're both your two bikes unified rear triangles like the old uh, Schwinn S10 S20 S30s and uh, what else the um, Klein Mantras Cool bikes. Probably ride terrible, but they're cool. And it's just fun to ride these old bikes. See what the kind of put your mountain biking skill to the test there we go look at that turning Man. The GoPros just big look. So yeah. Got it. No foot dab. I could ride through that. But I can why not the Ooh. That's a good little bike. So if you want to get into mountain biking, can't afford much, and use bike is all you can afford. These bikes are not old bikes can still do their job. Uh, won't be as easy as a lot of bikes, but that's the way it is. Woo! But anyway, thanks for coming along as we 
if you have any questions stuff like that about stole mongoose amplifier too drop them in the comments especially if you're going to complain about the music all right talk to you later bye